Hi, everybody. I'm John Gillette. I'm a lecturer in statistics, and I'm going to show you my use of, of Piazza Forum. I'm not an expert user. I'm a novice, and uh, John used that as a selling point uh, for this forum. So what I wanted was a communications tool to replace email question and answer and uh, to fix the obvious problems. I guess, sorry, the problems are here. Uh, I'm teaching in the last year or two Statistics 327, which is data analysis with R, which is really a computer programming class uh, that teaches students how to do computer programming for statistical analysis. Uh, and this is a uh, blended, hands-on course where the students are, are doing a lot of stuff with their computer in class. And then I'm teaching Statistics 371, Introductory Statistics for the Life Sciences, and that's a typical Stat 101 kind of class. And it's a, it has a traditional format where uh, I lecture and the students go to discussion and uh, stuff like that. In both of these classes, uh, the properties of the exercises that I use are that answers are typically right or wrong. And uh, you know that's very different than, say, teaching Hamlet and asking a student to relate what they just read in Hamlet to their life experience or something like that. And I think that's part of the reason that I like Piazza a lot uh, for a question and answer forum. <coughs> the things I was trying to fix in what I wanted in, in switching to Piazza were defects that I find with email. And uh, again, I think these are universal. But uh, it frustrates me a lot when I, as teacher, reply to several students that, you know, Tom asks me, how do I solve problem five? Or, you know, can you clarify the, the question? And I reply to Tom. And then an hour later, I get the same email from Jane. And I don't recognize that it's the same email. And I reply to her. And then I get a third one an hour later. And then I realize, oh, geez, I should be copying and pasting. And uh, I'm wasting my time. And then by the time I've done this a few times for three out of my 140 students, I realize that I'm not even being fair to the rest of them. So then I wonder, should I send a you know, bulk email to the whole class, uh, giving this big hint that I've just given on a homework problem, um, or clarifying you know, a requirement? But that would clutter my students' you know, inboxes, so I get stressed about doing that. <laughs> um, in any case, so, so I don't like this situation of, of replying several times and wasting my time, and then not having told everybody <coughs> what I've told some students. And then a the lesser problem is that some students uh, behave in a way that I don't think is very social in that they email me and several TAs uh, separately asking the same question. And then possibly each of us replies. And again, that's you know, a waste of everybody's time. So trying to address those things, uh, what I tried was a Piazza question and answer forum. And, uh, I had heard about this for a little while, and I might even have gone to piazza.com a little while, or, or occasionally before I first used it. And uh, it looked like a big website with lots of places to click. And I was intimidated by it uh, and didn't get over the hump of actually trying it until I had a TA sitting with me one day. This is a TA <coughs> with whom I worked very well, and he contributed a lot to my uh, statistical programming course. And uh, he said, let's do Piazza. I've done it. And with him sitting next to me, we were able to set up uh, you know, my Piazza course. And he showed me very quickly how to use it for question and answer. And uh, then I showed my students. Some of them already were familiar with it. And uh, I was off and running. And I can't remember what I did the second time. I think it's possible the second time when I was no longer working with this TA, I got stuck and called him back in. And he helped me set it up the second time. And that's sort of bad news that this is hard to set up. As, as is common now that I know what to do, I can set up a new course in a minute or two. And I'll show you that. Uh, so that you don't have to learn the whole system. You don't have to read manuals uh, if you know exactly where to go to set up the course. And I think John's going to show you even a way easier way than I have. That I think you could set it up uh, from Learn at UW more easily than what I'm about to show you. So the point here is uh, I was intimidated originally, but now I see that setup's very easy. Uh, I put a line in my syllabus, actually two lines in my syllabus, saying that Piazza is required for uh, for questions on the course. So I, I put one of these instructions next to my email address. I, I have my, e my email and my, my TA's email together. And next to them, I have uh, a little blurb that says, if you have, please don't use email for questions on course content, but instead use the Piazza question and answer form. Uh, I have a second place in my syllabus where I have you know, where to get help. And there's several places where they can get help. And I refer again to the form. Uh, then when I receive emails with questions, which I still do, uh, I reply not with helpful information, but rather saying, please post this to Piazza. That's a great question for Piazza. And when I don't do that, the student learns that it, I'm accessible through email, and then I've not switched to the Piazza forum. So I do do this, and I fear a little that I'm annoying a student, you know, giving them this extra step. But uh, I'm very glad that I do this, because it means that they do use Piazza. 
And then I do a two minute demonstration of Piazza in my first lecture. Uh, I usually jump in and lecture because I'm eager to get uh, into the course material. So I lecture at the for, for most of the first class. And then I pull out my syllabus and wave my hands through my syllabus for a few minutes at the end and uh, do a real quick demo where I uh, just post a dumb question like what time is it and uh, you know, the students and I answer it. So the students know what to do. <coughs> what happened? I've got some good things and some bad things. Uh, overall, my strong impression is it worked great. Uh, that I, uh, I love it. It has solved the pr many of the email problems that I have. Um, I never read the manual, and my students don't read the manual, uh, so that its user interface is very friendly uh, and easy to figure out both for teachers and students in the, in the sort of low-level mode that I use it. Uh, I don't have one-on-one -on -one email anymore for course content. And the typical questions I get, one is clarifying the requirements of a homework exercise, uh, or you know what's on the exam, that kind of thing. Uh, and the other is help with hard parts of the uh, homework exercises. And, uh, the other good thing, I guess, is the students have constant access to me. Uh, they ask questions at 10 o'clock at night, and I've gotten in the habit of uh, you know, checking. So I answer questions at night, and I answer questions at week on weekends, and I answer questions when I get up in the morning. And uh, I'm delighted with this because the students like uh, getting questions answered quickly. <coughs> Some bad things happen, too. Uh, one is I still get duplicate questions, uh, you know, that a person asks something, and I answer it. And uh, then a little while later, somebody puts a second post on the same topic rather than reading the, the first post. And when I'm not on my game, I just answer the question the second time and realize, oh, I shouldn't have done that. When I'm a little sharper, I refer the second question, say, please see the post with subject, uh, you know, homework three, number part, part two or part A or something like that. Uh, uh, another bad aspect of this is that often there ends up being a solution, or at least a fragmentary solution, to a homework exercise in Piazza, and a student can just, you know, stroll in five minutes before the deadline and, and look through Piazza and find lots of help on the homework. And I don't like that. Um, this doesn't happen in office hours. You know, that if, if uh, Jane comes to my office hours and asks questions that I think are good, I give her answers, and, you know, maybe she goes away and comes back uh, office hours the next day and asks another question. I've ended up giving her several good hints, but she's done a lot of learning. Uh, you know, in the, in, the, in the interim. But when, they, when all these hints end up on Piazza, nicely organized, uh, a student can just show up, read the hints, and possibly solve the problem, and not learn much. Because obviously the goal isn't to have the solution, the goal is to make the solution and you know, struggle to find it. So that's a, a defect of Piazza that wasn't there with office hours, uh, or one-on-one or -on -one emails. Um, I get lazy questions, and but I think you know what that means, but uh, I get questions where if the student the student's on exercise 2A, and if the student had just read the text that's two sentences introducing the exercise, if the student read that carefully, it answers the question. Um, or, especially in my statistical programming class, there's lots of bugs, and you know, finding bugs in, in computer code is hard for a newcomer. Uh, so they'll get a bug, and they'll immediately post a question to Piazza, rather than spending five or ten minutes or half an hour trying to find it themselves. And uh, I, I dislike this for the student's sake, because if they will fight, you know, and try to find the bug harder on, the, on their own, uh, they'll learn a lot more than just getting the answer from me. Uh, as with office hours, in my experience, a few students dominate. So, you know, I have 140 students in class, and maybe 10 of them show up in my office hours uh, during a semester, or maybe 30, but five of them, <coughs> you know, use 90% of my time in office hours. And the same thing is happening for me in Piazza, that I get a few students who are good at using it and they're very comfortable to use it, and they ask a lot of the questions. Uh, it's time consuming. Uh, I think I answer more questions through uh, Piazza than I did through email. Uh, and that's not all bad, uh, so I, I could have put this in both places. There's a lot of clutter in the way I use it, uh, in that there are some really good, crisp questions that I give good, crisp <laughs> answers to, and there are some poor questions uh, that I give poor answers to, you know, in combinations of those things. So it, it can end up that I don't really want all the students to read everything that's on the forum. And yet there aren't, uh, I haven't figured out real good ways to uh, direct them to where they should look for, for the valuable stuff. And then the constant access, you know, is a good thing, but it's also obviously a bad thing that uh, it's not good for my family life that I'm checking Piazza at 10 o'clock at night uh, mm -hmm. and on weekends and stuff like that. So that's a problem too. What I would do next time, 
Uh, the truth is, well, so one thing I would do is create the class through Learn at UW. I don't know how to do this. I think it's a 10 second thing. Uh, I don't know how to play in Learn at UW because I don't have a fake class and I don't want to experiment uh, with my 140 students watching. Uh, you know, meaning I don't want to generate emails to them and all of that. So I'm going to watch what John shows us about how to do this momentarily. And I think this will be easier than what I do. And what I do isn't hard anyway. Um, other than that, I'm not sure I would do anything differently than what I'm doing because I'm satisfied with what I'm doing. And changes will have some costs. But I'm interested in backing off on my response time. Uh, right now, I strive for quick responses. I, I have a setting in Piazza that I get an email notification when there's a question asked. So instantly, I'm replying. And I have an average response time that's you know, in minutes, you know, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, things like that. And uh, on the one hand, it, it delights me that I can answer my students' questions quickly like that. Uh, and on the other hand, it's not the right use of my time uh, that I should be doing other things a lot of the time. So I, I'm interested in backing off on my response time. Uh, we'll see from John's presentation and from the Piazza uh, marketing that I think it's designed really not in the mode that I'm using it. Uh, it's designed to let students and, and the students really do a lot more. If I would back off on my response time, my students and TAs would do more still in the mode that I'm in of sort of question and authoritative answer. But uh, I know that, that it's designed to let students develop cool answers to you know, really hard uh, problems and do collaborative learning and, and things like that. And I'm, I'm not really doing that at all, but I'm interested in exploring that. And then finally, I'd read the manual. And by that, I mean I'd watch tutorials and uh, you know, study more to, to learn the tool. Uh, I haven't done much of this just because I'm satisfied with the, the beginner uh, process that I have. 